Hi, my name is Mark and I teach economics. The purpose of this video is to explain the cause of the business cycle. A business cycle, as you know, is the oscillation between high employment, high production, and low employment and low production. This filters out frictional unemployment and structural unemployment. So we're just left with cyclical unemployment. Now the causes have been explained in various different ways. And perhaps every theory has a degree of explanatory value. But the way business cycles work is this. A, the cause of the business cycle is a disequilibrium in the money market creates real shocks that flow through to other sectors. Again, a disequilibrium in the supply and demand for money or loanable funds creates shocks in the real sector. That is the cause of the business cycle or the primary cause. What does this mean? What is the financial market, money market, loanable funds market? Think about a bank. A bank's function is primarily, it's an intermediary between savers and investors. And this is a supply and demand for money or loanable funds. When there's disequilibrium here, it can be actually a bank or through direct investment, stocks and bonds. This will create effects in the real sector. Now, the key component of this money market or the demand and supply of loanable funds is the interest rate. The interest rate is nothing more than the price of money in simplified terms. And its job is to coordinate these funds. It, in a perfectly competitive market, you know markets clear and coordinate very quickly and rapidly. But if there's some outside influence, such as government interaction, government mandate, government control, there can be tendencies towards disequilibrium. And we saw this in other markets, such as rent control, when you have rent control, you have disequilibrium. It creates non-price rationing, a distortion of the market. Similarly, the government controls the interest rate through central bank action. For, for, for simplification, we're just going to say the central bank, the Federal Reserve, sets the interest rate. And banks correspondingly set their rate, which we get in the retail and investment market. And that's, again, a simplification. So if the central bank misjudges the price of money of where it should be, this will create, again, a distortion, a disequilibrium, because it's not controlled exclusively by supply and demand free market competitive equilibrium. There are cases which it can be controlled, and that's another story. That's something called free money, where you have the supply and demand for money controlled by the market. But in our system, and in most developed systems in the world, the central bank tries to stabilize the business cycle through engineering the interest rate and match it with the, what they believe is proper. Now, what is a proper interest rate? First, you have to understand there's two different types of interest rates. There's the nominal rate of interest, and there's the real rate of interest. And in a textbook, the nominal rate of interest is what you might see at the bank, let's say, for simplification. And the real interest rate is the nominal minus the inflation rate. Now, economists actually know this as the Fisher rate of interest. He, he was an economist in the early part of the 20th century. And this is what is written in the textbooks. I'm going to give you an alternative story. There's the nominal rate of interest, which you see at the bank, and there's something called the real rate of interest, but more of an Austrian or Vixillian rate of interest. This is not any reference to inflation. What this real rate of interest rate is, is the marginal productivity of capital, the rental return on capital. And for simplifications for this, we'll call it the profit rate. And it's the relationship between the nominal rate of interest, which is observable and everybody sees at the bank, and this marginal productivity of capital, this profit rate, which determines which way the cycle will go. 
For example, if the bank has a 10% interest rate on new business loans, and I'm an entrepreneur, and I could make a 8% profit, chances are I'm not going to demand new loanable funds. I'm not going to go to the bank for a loan. However, if I can command a 20% profit, I will any day of the week go to the bank, obtain money for 10%, and make a profit of 20%. So you can see this marginal productivity of capital, capital in aggregate is a very hard thing to estimate for the Federal Reserve. And I don't even know if they're thinking in these theoretical terms. But it's this, what they need to do is they need to match very closely the marginal productivity of capital with the bank interest rate. And if they can do that, you have a situation which is closer to equilibrium. Because the profit rate will equal the interest rate. And we will achieve Again, zero economic profit. We're not talking about accounting profit. But obviously, entrepreneurs are looking for greater accounting profit and greater economic profit. So they're hoping to have it above the bank interest rate. Now, once this process is set forward, a cumulative process starts to unfold. And with expectations, it takes a life of its own. And we fall into a boom or bust cycle. So again, this disequilibrium in the money markets, in the market for loanable funds, created by the Federal Reserve, initiates shocks into the real sector, which will have implications and have a business cycle. And that's the explanation for the business cycle. Thank you very much.